Chancellor, distinguished colleagues, principals, members of the board of UE Press, our authors and friends and stakeholders and supporters of the, of the UE Press. I wish also to recognize Professor Dawes, a uh, distinguished Caribbean, African, African-American world thinker and author, poet, narrator, and, and scholar. Welcome, sir. His words were as gentle as you can imagine, but they were unmistakably firm and not intended for discussion. In fact, there were an instruction, a command not to be questioned. I beg you do. D do it for me. Don't let it die. I beg you. The unmistakable words of Rex Nettleford, Vice Chancellor, who called upon me with those scary and intimidating words, I beg you do, and all of you would know that when Rex wanted something done urgently, he would begin by, I, I beg you do. <laughs> don't, don't let it die. And so I said, yes, Vice Chancellor, I promise I will not let it die, but what is it that you wish me to prevent from dying? <laughs> the press, dear boy, do with it what you must, but take care of it. It needs a chairman, someone who can be crucified with no hope of resurrection or redemption. I'm sure many of you have also heard those expressions. I shall return to that conversation. It was over 20 years ago that our legendary and beloved Vice Chancellor Sir Alistair said to the university community, let there be a university of the West Indies press. A press that shall be the flagship of the Caribbean intellectual output and its promotion. Tonight we celebrate Sir Alistair and his vision as well as his fortitude in insisting upon the establishment of the UB Press. There was in those days a very strong headwind in our academy against the establishment of such a press. In fact, I recall in 1981 in a, a history interdepartmental meeting. In those, days, in those days, we used to hold interdepartmental meetings. All of the departments would get together and and discuss our collective well-being. And Dr. James Millett, our distinguished colleague from the St. Augustine campus, presented to the Interdepartmental History Meeting a proposal for the establishment of a University of the West Indies Press. We discussed at great length the concept, but indeed it was a divisive discussion. There were those who felt that such a press would be an excuse for UWI scholars to publish inferior scholarship at the expense of the institution. But there were those who felt that the time had come for our university to establish an internationally respected press that would publish not only the finest work of Caribbean scholars, but also the finest work on the Caribbean from scholars everywhere they may be. And so Sir Alistair, in his strategy of modernizing and internationalizing our university, an attempt to revitalize our intellectual culture, insisted upon the establishment of the UB Press. Professor Woodville Marshall, Pro Vice Chancellor, was asked to chair the Board of Directors, and he persevered in a climate of inadequate funding and in an environment where the purpose and the remit were not altogether clear. Those were the teeth and stages of the University of the West Indies Press. We should say that the university presses are not easy things to establish. They are very difficult institutions indeed uh, to put together. And so I said to Rex, I will do my best. 
And his response was interesting. I, I recall all of this, and it's, it's a good time in one's life to speak of recollections because that time will soon come when we won't be able to recall what we once experienced. So we, we must wallow in the culture of reflection where we can. <laughs> and so Rex said, um, okay, uh, Hillary, I will provide you with a woman, a white woman, and that was his language. She's damn good, he said. You will work with her, dialectically, of course. <laughs> and she will be the yeast that will enable the cake to rise. Of course, we are referring to Linda Speth, our brilliant, distinguished. <laughs> managing director. And so, uh, the two of us uh, met we hugged, we shook hands, and we agreed that we were shipmates on this, on this middle passage. And so it was 12, 13 years ago that we came together to do our best to ensure uh, that the Vice Chancellor's vision uh, were held in, uh, in place and that all would be well. We must confess that we did feel a little intimidated by the prospect because to fail Rex was to be consigned to a one-way ticket to Dante's hell. And so Linda Speth put in together a brilliant team, a brilliant team of editorial leaders, marketing specialists, distribution personnel, a wonderful, cohesive, and passionate team started out to modernize the University of the West Indies Press. And what was the remit? To establish a press of undeniable quality. To establish a press whose output will be relevant to the issues facing the region. A press that will be competitive, could hold its own in a globally competitive world of scholarly publishing. A press that would be sustainable and importantly, in the end, a press that would be respected by its authors and by the intellectual community of the Caribbean and, and beyond. Since those days, Vice Chancellor Harris and our many principals have invested heavily in the press. If you, if you follow the minutes of the University Financial, Finance and General Purposes Committee, you will see from time to time a line item that speaks to investment in the research and intellectual output of the university. That is the press. You would very rarely see the press. It, university's investment in the intellectual output and the research of the university. And under that wonderfully crafted line item, therein lies the existence of the press. Uh, skillfully managed by our distinguished university, Bursa, because behind those words are some very interesting numbers. <laughs> Bursa, we thank you. Vice Chancellor Harris has insisted upon the highest standard, strict financial and editorial reporting, and full accountability to financial, to FNGPC as well as to University Council. It is precisely this culture of accountability that has enabled the press with scrutiny, with internal criticism, to grow from strength to strength. Three vice chancellors then, McIntyre, Nettleford and Harris, have invested heavily in our press and in an environment of scarce financial resources. I believe that today, 20 years later, our press has become a symbol of the University of the West Indies global reach and inward stretch. I believe that the University of the West Indies Press has enabled the finest ideas about the Caribbean and from within the Caribbean to be made available to a community of international readers. 20 years might be a short time in the corporate space of a university press, but 20 years is a time when university presses the world over are failing each day, being closed down each day, 20 years in this digital environment is a very long time indeed. And so we give thanks to Linda Speth and her team. We give thanks to the board of directors who are responsible for the policy affairs of this press.
to our Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor Harris, and to our principals who invest in our press, to our intellectual communities, to our writers, and to our readers. I welcome each and every one of you.